LDW MMA, LD, LDW MMA City is your boy to coach you live, live, live on the coach show, the coach show live. Okay, folks, um, I really want to get at this video. Um, I haven't really did like a real deep fight breakdown. I hadn't done that because I think we all know, you know, what's, what's going to happen in this fight. I, I really, I want to talk about a couple of things in this video. I'm going to go from, you know, breaking down this fight to talking about the division itself and, you know, just sit back and enjoy the ride. I'm driving in my car right now. Okay, so Valentina Shevchenko versus Jennifer Maya. Um, I got to, I have to give a lot of respect to Jennifer Maya. Um, you know, Jennifer Maya wanted this fight. She called this fight out and Jennifer Maya is a dog, okay? Jennifer Maya is a straight dog. Um, she's going to fight hard, okay? I don't, I can't see Jennifer Maya winning this fight. Valentina is just, she's sick crazy. And I'm talking about Valentina is just like one of those fighters that come along once in a lifetime. And, and I'm going to really explain to y'all why, what the deal is. Jennifer Maya is going to fight hard. But Jennifer, if you look at any of her fights, she's going to do what everybody else try to do to Valentina. She's going to try to put extreme amounts of pressure on Valentina. And, you know, I got to tell y'all that, 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 that shit's not going to work. It's not going to work. I mean, everybody that, you know, try to put the pressure on Valentina, she ends up making them pay for it in dramatic ways. I mean, when Amanda Nunes tried to put pressure on Valentina, man, look, Valentina took her for the ride. And Amanda was on her back, she couldn't get up. Holly Holm tried to put pressure on Valentina. You know, Valentina was counting the hell out of Holly Holm. And I'm talking about, Valentina saw the openings. Um, when Juliana Pena tried it, you know, she tried to put pressure on Valentina, she got submitted. And, you know, Valentina messed her arm up, man. Juliana, people don't know, Juliana Pena was out. Okay, yeah, she got pregnant, but Juliana was actually, like, seriously hurt. Like, she was hurt. Uh, Juliana had to rehab that arm, man. I'm talking about, like, yeah, man. Yeah, that took years off of Juliana Pena's career. People don't know that. Um, Sarah Kaufman, you know, she tried to rush Valentina. I mean, Sarah Kaufman went for the ride. Like, you know, it's some point in time that people have to understand that that's not going to work. Okay, you got to do some other stuff, man. You got to do some other stuff. Um, and also Jessica I, you know, she tried to just go in and bum rush Valentina. She got knocked out. I mean, she tried it. Okay, listening to Amanda Nunes. And, you know, and it's funny because Amanda Nunes know that that's not the way to beat Valentina. Amanda Nunes was doing a lot of misdirection. And see, Amanda became unpredictable in that fight. Amanda Nunes had to change it up because, no, Valentina don't have one-punch knockout power. She can't do that to you. But if somebody hitting you with counters that you don't see coming, those are the worst ones because you can't brace for those. And when you don't brace for a punch or a kick, you get knocked out. Okay, that's just how it is. It don't matter who punching you. When you can't see it coming, you're going to get hurt. Okay, you can't. You will get hurt. And that's the problem that fighters have with Valentina. That's their problem. Okay, they can't see the, the, they can't see the counters coming. So when they can't see them coming, you know, it's like they're at a disadvantage. Like, go to the Holly Holm fight, man. Oh, and another thing we're going to talk about is, you know, Jennifer Maya. She can't be predictable in this fight. You notice Valentina, she beat the hell out of all of her opponents, but she beat the ones that are very predictable. I'm talking about she beat them. When they're predictable, like, you know, some fighters, when, when nothing's working, they get into the same habit. You know, they, they get into the same habit, they do the same thing. And, you know, Valentina picks up on that. And then, you know, it's crazy when she fought Holly Holm. Valentina literally actually knew what Holly was going to do. Like, she knew it. Like, Valentina, you know, was like a damn... Uh, you know, she was like a batter, man. And you know how sometimes batters will watch the pitcher, you know, to try to time the pitches? Valentina was damn near, like, timing everything Holly Holm was doing. I said, man. And when I watched the fight, I'm like, you know, it's like she know what's coming. But, yeah, I'm going to tell you what happened, though, and I'm going I'm to give, give you a little nugget. Holly Holm switched up a little bit. Okay, I want you to watch when Holly Holm got a knockdown. Or, you know, it, it seemingly looked like a knockdown. But Holly Holm switched up. She switched up on Valentina, and Valentina wasn't expecting, you know, Holly Holm to follow back up with another left. She wasn't expecting that because Holly Holm had been doing the same little three-punch counter and trying to finish with a kick. Well, Holly Holm in this situation, she didn't finish with a kick. She finished with a punch, and Valentina wasn't expecting it and got caught. But, you know, Valentina recovered very quickly. She got back up and, and continued to dominate the fight. 
Um, that's what I'm saying. You have to be unpredictable. And I've watched Jennifer Maya fight. You know, she she's very predictable. She's very predictable. She's a dog. Okay, she's going to come in and fight hard. But within the first maybe 60 seconds of the fight, Valentina going to pick up on what Jennifer Maya like to do. Jennifer Maya, you know, she liked the close, uh, she liked close quarter contact fight. Like she liked that. That's that's her thing. You know, she liked to get in, and you know, she liked to brawl. But Jennifer Maya, her ground game is actually pretty good. And the girl got six submission games. She got a six submission game. Like, what she gonna have to try to do, man? She's gonna have to try to be smart and try to lure Valentina in. To, to try to even initiate and get get some of these takedowns because her submissions are good. You know, she can't go in and do what everybody else do. Like, you rush Valentina, she's going to make you pay for that. Like, it's just, it's no getting around that, okay? She's too good. She too damn good, okay? And then don't think that the woman can't wrestle. Don't think that, you know, she can't take you down. Don't think, because she can't. Valentina can do all of that. She can do it. And that's why people, I'm sick of people saying, well, Valentina, you know, just a, a kickbox. Like, what, what the, are y'all stupid? Y'all not watch the fights? Valentina can wrestle. She one of the best wrestlers in the UFC. She one of the best wrestlers in the UFC. I mean, I, I just don't think people notice and pick up on that. I don't think they notice, but man, she's that good. So Jennifer Maya is going to have to think outside the box in this one. You can't be the same person. Can't be the same person. Because if you're that predictable person, the fight's over. Okay, we don't even have to try to guess what's going to happen. That's why I'm not doing any breakdowns because a lot of these fighters, they don't they don't think that they could do something different. You know, they're not like they just they do the same thing. I don't even think Valentina study tape on these people. I, I'm, I'm starting to think she don't. I think she get in there and she just make adjustments where she need to. Oh, OK. OK. So you want to try. To, so, so you want to throw the one, two? OK. You want to throw the one, two? I'm going to count over top with my overhand right. Okay, okay. So you want to uh, you want to calf kick me? Okay. Well, I'm going to do a spinning back kick to the solar plexus. Okay, so you want to try to rush me? Okay, well, I'm just going to take a step and rotate my hips to the left, and I'm going to come back with a counter from my angle that you can't see coming. Okay, so you want to put me in a clinch? Oh, okay, well, I'm going to put my hands on top of your neck, push your head down, and then I'm going to put you in a tie clinch. Okay, so you want to hold me against the cage. Oh, okay, cool. If you want to hold me against the cage, that's fine. Go on here to hold me against the cage. But guess what I'm going to do? Okay, I'm going to trip you while you're trying to knee me. Okay, and as you're throwing those knees up into my, in my stomach, I'm going to catch you on one of them and then I'm going to take you down. Oh, okay, cool. Okay, so you want to get the fight back into the center of the octagon. Okay, cool. Oh, so, oh, okay. Okay. So you want to throw a straight left hand? Oh, I'm going to come back with a Superman punch. Like, it's like she got something for everything. Oh, you want to try to get in close? Okay, I'm going to take you down with a Taniyashi. Oh, okay. Like, see, Valentina, she got something for everything. She got something for everything. And and, it, and it's, it's crazy, man. It's crazy that you're going to have to wake up early in the morning. This is the problem in the division, man. And this is why Jessica and Drive was needed, okay? They don't have many people who work hard. I'm talking about they working their ass off to be number one. Jessica and Drive is doing that. Valentina is doing that, okay? Sabina Mazo doing that. Like, like, when I think of three fighters in that whole division, I'm talking about they eat, sleep, and they think about fighting. That, that's it. Everything that they do in life, they just want to train. Them the only three that I can really, really think and, and, and think to myself that that's who's doing it. They ain't out here partying, man. They ain't out here smoking weed. They ain't out here drinking. and They ain't doing all this stuff, man. They're not, not, they, they're not out here, you know, like putting their body through hell. These people, they out here training, man, because, look, they trying to get up in there. I mean, how y'all think uh, Sabina Mazo outlasted Justine Kish? I mean, how y'all think that? That's through training. I'm to my, that's through, like, hours of training. I remember one day, man, I, this is no lie, I, I called Sabina on the phone. I'm like, yo, yo you still want to do this interview? And she said, yeah. She said, um, I'm going back to training. I said, wait a minute. I, like, like you've been at training two times already. She said, yeah. She said, I'm going back again. And I said, so is this normal? She said, yeah. She said, and she told me. Uh, Sabina Manzo told me something that was just like crazy. She said, coach, if I want to be the best, I want to work on my weaknesses. She said, I got to train as often as I can. 
And she said, I'll take break to eat. You know, I take break to, to rest. She says, but I must train as often as I can because I want to be the top flyweight. And you know what? And, I'm, and, and that's, that's somebody. That's, that's like a champion mindset. Sabina Mazo, she ain't a millionaire yet. But I tell you what, Sabina Mazo going to be a millionaire. By the time she's 27, Sabina Mazo going to be touching M's. I promise you. And it's like I was blown away, man, because, you know, the girl is like 23. I'm, I was blown away that, uh, you know, a young kid, like somebody that young, somebody that damn young is thinking like that. But she ain't wasting time, man. She's not playing around. You go to her Instagram, you know, she ain't up there, you know, shaking her booty and she ain't doing all that. I mean, Sabina Mazo wants to be a fighter. OK, Valentina, most of her videos are training videos. OK, most of them, they train it. They, they trying to get at it. They trying to get this work. They trying to get this money. They trying to get the, 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 these belts. You know, they want it all. But a lot of fighters in the division, they don't do that. When you see Jessica Andrade, you see Andrade doing some chilling, you know, but you see her doing a lot of training, a lot of lifting, a lot of running. Like, they're, they're so engrossed in the work that they got to do that sometimes they forget about time itself. See, the division need fighters like that. They need these fighters. Now, you have, you have fighters that are talented, but they don't work at it. They're not dying in the gym. Yeah, they can tell you, oh, I'm dying in the gym. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. And then, you know, you, you go to social media and they got like 10 pictures, you know, showing they behind. Like, come on. I mean, let, let's get real. Do you want to be the best? And as beautiful as Denise Kilho, she ain't even in the UFC. As beautiful as she is, Denise could be doing the same thing. I'm going to tell you, now I had this con I talked to Denise one day. And, um, and I said, you know, Denise, I said, you know, you... You want to kickbox and people don't think you got, you know, a ground game. And she said, Coach, when I lost to Vady Arteaga, she said, that's the last time I'm losing. She said, I went back and I reinvented myself. And this is me and her were just talking off the scene. We were just talking. Okay. We were just talking on the phone. And she said, Coach, I reinvented myself. She said, I had to. I had to reinvent myself. And she said, I did it because I don't like to lose. And Denise was telling me, man, she was spending so much time in the gym. I mean, she had her husband, you know, had that dude, man, Denise going home. She's still doing drills with her husband. Like, Denise was obsessed because she hated it. And she said, Coach, I'm going to work myself into the ground until I get that belt. That's the mentality you got to have. We got too many people in the 125-pound division. They don't have that mentality. They don't have that go-getter mentality. Like, I got to do this at any cost. You got people running away from the smoke. You got people running from the belt. You got people that's running and they need to, you know, they need to get their asses out. Well, you got fighters like Jennifer Maya. Yeah, she had a disadvantage, but at least Jennifer Maya, man, at least she working. At least she's not running away from the fire, man. Jennifer Maya want to inhale the smoke and breathe. What's up with the rest of these people? 80% of that division, man, they're a bunch of wannabes. They want to be models, but they don't want to be fighters. Don't nobody want to be a damn fighter. And everybody say, Coach, well, Valentina take raunchy photos. Look, for the first 18 years of her career, you ain't finding no raunchy photos of Valentina. You start finding some of them in 2015 when Valentina started making some money. When she started, Valentina laid the work down early. She laid that work down early. I'm talking about she was in there, in them gyms, man. Taking kicks to the head, getting punched, being concussed. Fighting people 20, 30, 40 pounds heavier than her. I'm talking about these are men. This woman spending hours in a gym. I'm talking about 10, 12, 16 hours in the gym. And I'm talking about day to day. Are you telling me that you got other people in this division doing that? Is anybody else doing that shit? Or have they done that? See, you got, you got too many fighters. Too many fighters, you know, they want to be Valentina Shevchenko, the champion. But you don't have a lot of fighters that, that want to be Valentina, the Muay Thai, and the kickboxer. Okay, you don't, so you don't have people that want to be that. Because that Valentina was laying down the blueprint on how to be a millionaire and how to be the best fighter in the world. See, people don't have more type of, they don't have that. They don't want to be there. No, no, no. Everybody want to be Valentina the champion and be recognized and all this other mess. 
But don't nobody want to be Valentina the Muay Thai kickboxer when nobody really knew who she was. When she was in these gyms killing herself. When she was going to different places trying to learn how to wrestle. When she was getting her jujitsu black belt, her sambo black belt. Nah, don't nobody want to be that Valentina because that Valentina had to grind. That Valentina was walking up in the gyms. You know, she was in there getting beat up before she got her technique right. She was in there getting kicked, getting punched in the stomach. I mean, y'all know Valentina had to get taken to school before she started learning how to be a teacher. Y'all know that? Valentina had to get taken to school before she learned how to be a teacher. So I tell some of y'all this, man, that this woman has put her life and blood and sweat into being the best mixed martial artist in the world. She's put it all in there. How many of these fighters you see? Go, go to Instagram. Go to Instagram and look at any of these fighters and go look at what they're doing. You can literally tell who doing work and who's sitting there BSing around. I swear you can. And it's really not that hard to figure out. This fight's going to be good for as long as it lasts.